That's going to be a... I'm going to mess this up. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to say Meals on Wheels and Senior Outreach Services. Yes. yes. And then go in your names in one breath. Uh, I'm okay with you breath. taking a breath. Are you okay with him taking a breath? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Mike Burkle or Contra Costa. Today I'm here with... <laughs> <laughs> Do you do a blooper reel? <laughs> Sometimes I do. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hey everybody, Mike Burkholder, Contra Costa Today. I'm here with Elaine Clark and Susanna Meyer of Meals on Wheels Senior Outreach Services. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yes. <laughs> They're pretty free. Good. Good. I, want, I wanted to bring you both on to talk about the Meals on Wheels program and kind of what you do, who you serve. Um, Elaine, why don't you start with kind of an overview of the organization? Great. Well, we are a 50-year-old organization, and we focus on helping seniors remain independent and healthy for as long as possible. Uh, we have seven different programs, including the one that's really best known, which is the Meals on Wheels Home Delivered Program. Uh, but we do a lot of things. We are the organization, the only organization in the county that does fall prevention. So we go into people's homes and um, do an assessment and look at why they're falling and then make the changes to their home and work with the seniors individually. Uh, to improve their balance and reduce falls. So that's so what, so one like of the for, I'm sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. you, but so like what would be like one of the main causes for falling? Uh, could be tripping hazards for rugs. Could be having a little dog run around. Uh, a lot of people have lost their um, strength and balance. And so having these um, uh, things around, you know, they don't lift their feet up all the way. Huh. A lot of times they need a grab bar to hold on to. So, so just a little grab bar that does the trick and yep, yep. good to know. So, yeah, and we have a visiting program and a lot and case management. We're the only organization in the county that has case managers that go into people's homes, work with them, and connect them with services, including we do a lot now with uh, elder abuse prevention. So we are really the go-to senior agency in the county for a lot of in-home services. And I know for you... Um, you got involved with the program from just being a volunteer? Yes. Uh, I actually I moved to Brentwood, uh, was working part-time and didn't really know anyone, and heard about Friendly Visiting and got involved with that. I, I interviewed with the Friendly Visitors program manager at the time, and I thought, I want this woman's job. <laughs> <laughs> and it came up the next year, and I immediately <laughs> applied. So I've actually had quite the journey with Meals on Wheels and Senior Outreach Services. I've done a few different positions. So you stole a job. No, she had left by that time, okay. so I'm good. My so karma's good. I earned it. You earned it. I'm yeah. thinking I should be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and so what was it about the program that made you really, you know, other than building friendships, what did you love about it to go from a volunteer to wanting to work full-time? Well, I, I've always been really... Um, attracted to the senior population. I really love to listen to stories. I, I love to, to see faces that tell stories and to, I, I, I don't know, just really, that really touches me. So um, meeting the woman that I was visiting with got me very connected with issues that seniors face. And my grandmother always inspired me. She was a volunteer for her entire life. So uh, Friendly Visitors takes one hour a week and you're changing someone's life and I thought gosh for one hour I can do this what more can I do if I'm actually involved with it and how can I improve this program and how can I touch all the different lives uh, for people in such need in the county and so I mean what what do you do in that hour that hour is actually a pretty easy hour it's um, gosh sharing stories having tea if someone's more active you can take them out for um, coffee go on a walk it's completely open it's um, companionship it, there's actually a statistic now known now that says isolation for seniors is as dangerous as smoking 15 cigarettes a day, wow. which is absolutely appalling. And people who have an hour a week, it can be an evening, it can be a weekend, can change that for a person that can actually change someone's life. So if somebody wants to volunteer for that program, how does that work? Do you guys do like a background check? 
or do they just volunteer? Is it kind of good faith effort, or how does? No, well, a lot of good faith, but there's a background check, Susanna. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there there is a background check. Um, there's also for people who are providing transportation or delivering meals. There's a DMV okay. report that goes along with it. Needs to be clean for three years. We have a volunteer specialist who screens uh, volunteers that come in through the door uh, with a background check, etc. But she also will help people if if they call and they say. I'm not really sure how I want to help. I just know I want to help. Sometimes people want to help with an event. Mm -hmm. They want to help with a special project like data entry. Um, they could be administrative volunteers in our office. They can visit people throughout sure. the county, and they can deliver meals. They can work at a cafe. We have a lot of opportunities, and our volunteer specialists will help people to hone in a little bit on what they want to do. Perfect. And um, Elaine, for you, what what's kind of your service area? Well, not kind of, but what is your service area? And what's some of the milestones you guys have had recently? Because I know you hit 5 million meals as a program last year, right. the which senior, is amazing. Yes, the Senior Nutrition Program in Contra Costa, which we are part of, um, as far as the meal delivery, we, we served, yeah, we hit that milestone with the number of meals. We are looking to expand and even do some frozen meal routes so that we can get more people on so we reduce the waiting list uh, while a route comes open. So we're really looking at innovative ways to feed more people. And also, the isolation piece is so important mm -hmm. that it's such a concern that we are looking at ways. We were just awarded a Subaru uh, car. Nice. Um, yeah, it's, thank you, Subaru. <laughs> thank and you, Meals Subaru. on Wheels America. <laughs> um, and so what we're doing is we're taking that vehicle and we're going to identify seniors who are at risk high risk of depression and isolation. And we're gonna create some mini routes and um, that maybe only have four people. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna train uh, the volunteers and staff people to go out and actually spend an extra half an hour or so with those individuals talking with them um, so that we can see and then uh, look at have we reduced the isolation, the depression. So we're, one of the things that we're doing is trying to tie everything to health outcomes so it's not only did we feed somebody, but are they healthier as a result? Sure. And that includes not only physical, but mental. So everything we do now is tied to an outcome. And we're looking um, at, at what, what we need to measure. And we're bringing in healthcare partners. We're bringing in uh, Los Medanos Nursing School. We're um, Cal State East Bay Nursing School nurses. So we're, we're looking at... How can we all work together? What are our collaborators that can strengthen the things that we do? Because we're not, we don't do everything. Well, you kind of do. I mean, I know the, <laughs> the, the organization name is Meals on Wheels, but you're not just only providing meals. Right. You're providing, yeah. uh, I'll call it entertainment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you're obviously providing the meals. You're having events. Yes. Um, so it's, it's really kind of, the name doesn't really represent the organization, right. um, which, I mean, that's not a bad thing, but to get the meals out there, uh, there was a stat that you guys served mm -hmm. 750 meals a day. It's actually much higher than that, so, you know, that was six months ago. Oh. So it's really... It's Has really things gotten that bad in <laughs> six months? Um, or good. You well, can put it that way. Yeah, and <laughs> seniors are the fastest growing, right, okay. uh, demographic, so... There's never enough, sure. um, th so the need continues to grow. And yes, we do a lot, but we know what we're really good at, and we have some excellent partners in the county. So we, we just, at our own um, cost, uh, did a survey last year, and it was in Spanish and English, and it went out to all the zip codes out in this area in East County, um, where there was a senior, um, 60 year older, living there, and it was about what services do you need, where are the gaps, and then we took a look at that with some of our partners. And, and um, the organization, actually, that helped us fund that survey was um, uh, John Muir Mount Diablo Community Health Fund. So, so with them and their expertise, then we took a look at this survey and, des and determined that meal programs, that exercise programs, the fall prevention program, and also some senior legal services and case management, those were the key issues nice. facing seniors. So... We don't do senior uh, legal issues. Partnering with senior legal services, and they're going to um, put together a plan so that now we will be able to go into seniors' homes instead of having them come. So, so we're really trying to figure out 
where are the gaps and listening that's the key too we're listening to people we're not just coming in and saying this is what you need you tell us what you need and we'll figure out if we can pull people together including ourselves to get there do you want to give a shout out to some of your community partners Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> of course, there's John Muir. Um, Kaiser has been very good about um, funding some Tai Chi classes, but also um, we work a lot with Debbie Toth and her organization. Um, which is? Which is the... Um, Choice and Aging. Choice and Aging. They changed their name, so I want to make sure. Thank you. You know, when I, when I had her on, I messed up their name like five times. <laughs> we had to do a bunch of takes on that. <laughs> well, so there's the ombudsman. Senior, we, we work with... Um, uh, senior peer counseling. Senior peer counseling. Mm -hmm. An elderly wish elderly, foundation. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there's so many. Them. And everybody does really well at something. And so if we can all work together, it's much, much better. Uh, and the community's better. And one of the things that we're doing, which I think is pretty exciting, is matching. We're trying to do more intergenerational programming. Mm -hmm. So uh, we just had, for example, for Valentine's Day, we connected a bunch of seniors with some kids. Um, who was that, Susanna? What was the group? It was NCL. NCL, yeah. National Charity League. Mm -hmm. So they came and they decorated cookies together and really talked about things. Yes. So more of that type of thing, I think we're, we're so much better off. Nice. And you know, talking about the community partners thing, a lot of nonprofits, we work together and we support each other in our um, in the efforts, but we work with some um, for-profits as well. For example, like New Star Energy, Black Diamond, which are local companies that actually have routes for us. Um, they get together a group of employees who rotate and once a week deliver meals. So yes. it doesn't have to be a nonprofit. We have a lot of partners that are for-profit. We also work with, gosh, Rotary Clubs and all the chambers. I mean, we have some really fantastic groups that support us that are not necessarily serving seniors, but just really active in the community. And when you talk about serving seniors, you guys have a, a ride-along, I, I don't know if it's a day or night thing, a ride-along program coming up just to, for yeah, people to try it? March for yeah. Meals. March is, for Meals. Uh, it's a national campaign that was set up to, to basically bring attention to the issues of senior hunger and isolation. And every Meals on Meals agency in the country chooses to recognize it in a different way. So we do dignitary ride-alongs. Those are going to be the week of the 19th of March. And uh, we're sending out some communications about that now to see if people want to join us on those ride-alongs throughout the areas that we serve in the county. And then on March 23rd, on Friday, we'll be doing an actual march in Todos Santos Plaza okay. in Concord. Um, next year, we're going to be doing it in, in uh, East County, but at this point, we're doing Concord. But it's just, it's really to bring the community together and, and intergenerational and people in the industry and just to kind of share those issues and, and bring the discussion out and teach kids, honestly, how to advocate. Teach them that they have a voice. We're going to bring some students from um, Queen of All Saints private school in Concord to come and march with us and create signs and and learn about what they can do with their voices to help people who are in need in the county, which is really critical. We've got to bring the other generation in because they're our future volunteers and funders. Yeah. So speaking of East Contra Costa County, what are some of the challenges you guys are having out here with the growing population and, and obviously transportation and it's mm -hmm. kind of farther away from the rest of the county? What are, what are some of the challenges that you guys are facing right now? Well, uh, <laughs> you hit it on the head when you said it's far, kind of far away. It's, it's far. Uh, most all of the uh, nonprofits, um, the bigger ones, are in Central County, like us. So for us to actually get out here and spend a lot of time out here, it's just, it's almost, at some point, sometimes it's almost a half a day. So... What we're doing is we're looking at opening a satellite office okay. uh, because the population in East County is growing faster than in other, the senior population, even faster than in other, some of the other parts of the county. There, there will be a doubling of the, the senior population in the next 15 years. It's already out in East County. It's already at about 20%, which is huge. Wow. So, and there's a lessening, a, a cutting of funding at the national level all the, the last budget proposal cut or eliminated funding from pretty much every senior program. So what we need to do is, as grassroots effort, is figure out how we're going to serve these folks and what we're going to do about it, how we're going to work more efficiently. So with that, we have made the commitment, long-term commitment. Our board is behind it. It's, it's our long-term strategy is to make sure that we can come out here, stabilize, and be here, uh, and then pull other 
uh, partners in. So we are doing that right now. We've been studying it and, and getting to know the people out in the area for mm -hmm. the last year and a half. And now we're looking for space. So one of the other issues is there's not as much infrastructure sure. out in this part of the county. So what we need to do is is work to find some you know, space that's acceptable, that, that where a lot of seniors will come, where it's easy, where it's ADA compliant or compatible. Uh, and then what will that look like? And then the messaging to get it out there. Sure. So there's and all of that work. Yeah. Honestly, Mike, you know this as an East County resident. I'm an East County resident. East County, as much as it's growing so very quickly and expanding so much, it still operates in many ways like a small town. Well, it's its own little county out here. It is. It know. is. So really, we need to have an actual presence. And, and being a resident myself, I try to hit as many chamber meetings and, and make as many presentations as I can out here. Um, but I'm I'm one person with that ability, and so we're we're doing what we can to just make people understand that we are here, that our services are available here. But it's it's definitely a challenge. So are you guys everywhere. <laughs> are you guys funded by donations, corporate sponsors? Is the the county providing funding? Obviously federal funding, but um, how are you guys funded? So it's kind of all of the above. Uh, we um, we are about forty five percent of our programs are. Um, receive some government funding of some sort. It, most of it comes from the Older Americans Act, which is, of course, at risk right now. Same thing with the um, community development block grants. Uh, but those are critical. And then we have um, corporate funders, we have foundations, we have individual donors, because all of the services that we provide are free. Everything is at no charge. We never um, ask a, a client, a senior, for any, any money. Uh, and that's because we serve the most vulnerable. And, sure. you know, they typically don't have a lot of funds. And so we just need to figure out how to keep them safe and healthy. Um, so we beg, borrow, and plead. And hold fundraisers. And hold a gala. <laughs> so you have, they actually do have a gala on May 12th at the Blackhawk Auto Museum in mm -hmm. Danville. What's that going to be like? Well, we're celebrating 50 years. It's it's a really big deal, and of course, you only turn 50 once, so it's our golden jubilee anniversary, and we're we're doing what we can to to reach out to as many people in the area to have them join us and bring in um, this big celebration. We've got a Motown band called Top Shelf Classics. We have nice. Scott's Seafood Catering. Um, it's a beautiful venue. If you haven't been there, the cars are just drool worthy. But um, yeah, we're doing a lot of outreach on that to try and bring people in to help us celebrate and launch the next 50 years with a very successful fundraiser is a goal too. Perfect. And, and I have to say, um, Tampico Terrace and Super yeah. have stepped up to be our major sponsors and this is really helping with that, with, with us being able to pull this off. Mm -hmm. so. And so I'll throw in all the uh, contact information okay. in, the, in the video, but uh, for those that want to get involved, how do they volunteer and how does that process start and what can they do? East County does have a need for volunteers th um, for us. And, and the biggest one right now is we really need substitute drivers, um, which means it's a little bit more flexible. If someone maybe has um, one week a month where they're available, they can actually help. Um, volunteer drivers pick up meals in Antioch at Bateman on Auto Center Drive mm -hmm. and uh, do like a, about a two-hour route, hit about 16 homes in that time, and then bring containers back, like the cooling mm -hmm. unit, back to that site. So it's about a two, two and a half hour, depending on your commuting area, um, commitment. A substitute can put their name on a list and be called when we have an opening and say yay or nay. And it goes, you know, they go back on the list if they can't do it. And if they can, it's great. And if not, we move on to the next person. So even if you just have, like I said, a day a, day a month or two days a month, it's still worth connecting with us. Um, as I mentioned, we have a volunteer specialist who can help people really determine where their best fit is. Friendly visitors in this area, we cover all the way through Bethel Island, Discovery Bay, um, Brentwood, Byron, all of these areas, as well as Antioch and, and et cetera. And there are people waiting right now for a friend. And, and I mentioned that one hour a week can just make this huge difference. And this can be done on an evening or a weekend. So if someone who's working full time can actually volunteer and give back in that period of time. When I first started doing it, I brought my kids along, um, had them help with little chores around the house and landscaping. I felt like it was my duty as a parent to really involve my children and, and give them the understanding of what it means to be responsible community members. Perfect. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have contact information on that as well. There's a process. And so what do you look for in a volunteer? Somebody with a good heart mm -hmm. and that wants to make a difference and just be friendly. 
my husband, um, who used to work for the federal government, um, I won't tell you which branch, <laughs> but you would never think, you know, and he retired, and six months later, he's been delivering food on Fridays, and he loves it because he, the, his, his clients meet him, they, they hang with him for a few minutes, they talk to him about things, he sometimes screws in light bulbs. And then he can go off and do the next thing, and he just feels so needed and appreciated. So anybody that just, you know, wants to make a difference and has a heart. Just my try husband, it. Just yeah, try it. That's right. I actually roped my husband in recently. That's right. Well, I shouldn't say that. I didn't rope him in. He's been involved with this on the outside, helping with events and things for years. But this is the first time he's had the flexibility to be able to help at all. He's a sub. He's not free every week, but he's on that list. And I just knew when he told me he was going to do it, it was just really going to have a huge impact on him. And he talks about it, talks about the impact and just what a difference that little period of time makes. And, and it really makes you recognize what's good in your own life. Yeah. And, and how much just a, a small amount of time can really help someone else in need. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. um, I just want to thank you both for coming on today and talking about Meals on Wheels and everything that you're doing for the senior community and just helping out. I mean, it's really just awesome. I don't think a lot of people realize the impact you have. A lot of people just assume it's just delivering mm -hmm. meals. And, yeah. you know, it's much more than that. I, I encourage everyone to, if they can volunteer, sign up, contact them. I'll throw the link in. So thank you so much for coming on and talking about thank it. And, and thank you for giving us this opportunity. It's not it's not oft, often that we get to do something like this because nonprofits don't have marketing budgets. So we really appreciate the uh, the ability to reach out. Yeah, and that's that's what this show's for is just to educate people on what's out there and what's mm -hmm. available to volunteer and show the good in the community. So Absolutely. thank you so much. Yep. Thank you, Mike. I'm Mike Burkholder, Contra Costa Today. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you next time. Take care.